Lakshmi Prasanna, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this session, we will discuss about Program Control Transfer Instructions. So, we will see the subtopics like Classification, that means what are the instructions that comes under this Program Control Transfer Instructions with examples. Now, so, coming to the Program Control Transfer Instructions, so, what is meant by program control transfer instructions means, when this type of instructions are executed, the control will be transferring to some address what we have specified in the instruction. Or we can also call it as the control will be transferring to the predefined address that we have specified in the instruction. So, that is why this program transfer control transfer instructions are also called as branching instructions because the control will be branching when these instructions are executed to some predefined address or the address specified in the part of an instruction. Now, so here when this type of instructions are executed, the control will be transferring to the new specified address which we have indicated as a part of an instruction directly or indirectly. Next, here when this type of instruction is executed, the CS and IP registers, that is CS register means code segment register which will be holding the segment address and IP register, instruction pointer register which will be holding the offset address. Now, when these instructions are executed, the CS and IP registers will be loaded with the new values of CS and IP when the control transfer has been happened. Now, here coming to the classification, the program control transfer instructions are classified into different types. So, here unconditional branch instructions and next classification is conditional branch instruction. So, coming to the unconditional branch instruction, as here the name specifies unconditional branch instruction. So, it means that this type of instructions are executed when the condition is not met. That means no need to satisfy any condition to make the control transfer. So, such type of instructions comes under unconditional branch instructions. Okay. So, here unconditional branch instructions means without satisfying Without satisfying any condition, the control will be the control will be transferring the control will be transferring to the specified address. The specified address. So no need to satisfy any condition, when these instructions are executed, the control will be transferring to that predefined address. So, for example, like uh, some instructions like jump, call, RET. So, if such type of instructions are executed, the control will be transferring to the predefined address without satisfying any condition. So, these are some of the examples that comes under this unconditional branch instructions. Now, Coming to the conditional branch instructions, here the name itself says conditional branch instruction. That means the branching will be happened when only the condition is met. Okay. So, conditional branch instructions means when the condition is satisfied, when the condition is satisfied, then only, then only the control will be, then only the control will be transferring, then only the control will be transferring to the predefined address or to the specified address. Okay. So, here 
what is meant by satisfying the condition means satisfying the status of the flux okay so the condition here it is related to meeting the status of flux when this flux condition status is met then only the branching will be performed to that particular address so some instructions like j and z that is jump if not zero j z jump if zero j o jump if overflow j n o jump if not overflow okay so all these are the examples that comes under conditional branch instructions now and coming to the detailed discussion about the unconditional branch instructions here the first unconditional branch instruction is call call is a unconditional branch instruction so when this instruction is executed the specified address will be called and it will be executed and again after executing that sub routine or procedure it will be returning to the main program the control will be returning to the main program okay so here the call represents unconditional unconditional call and next instruction is ret okay so whenever we use call instruction in order to call the procedure or sub program at the end of the sub program we have to write this ret instruction in order to return to the main program so that is why ret is called return from the procedure and next unconditional branch instruction is int n so int represents interrupt and n represents type number of the interrupt so int n represents interrupt interrupt type n and the next instruction is int o so int o represents interrupt overflow interrupt on overflow and next unconditional branch instruction is jmp so jmp represents jump so here jmp instruction is called un conditional jump and next unconditional branch instruction is iret so iret i represents interrupt ret represents return return from interrupt so iret is return from interrupt so interrupt is nothing but isr interrupt service routine and next one is loop so loop represents loop unconditional so all these are the unconditional branch instructions so we will discuss about all these uh, unconditional branch instructions in detail and coming to the first unconditional branch instruction it is call instruction okay so when this call instruction is executed what is the operation that will be performed what we have to store in the stack and how to retrieve the contents from the stack so in order to discuss about this instruction we should know about all this so here when this call instruction is executed it is going to transfer the execution of the program to the sub program or procedure okay so generally here it is going to call a sub routine how it is going to call a sub routine before going to call a sub routine it have to save the contents on to the stack so what are the contents the control has to save on the stack means the value of cs and ip because when after executing the procedure the pro control has to again return to the main program by retrieving that contents only from the stack that is the contents of cs and ip and so the general format of this call instruction is call operand okay so this is the mnemonic and here operand represents the address what we are specified okay so here the operand we can write the address directly 
or you can represent the address where the control has to move indirectly also. That means by using the register like that 16 bit. Now, so here when this call instruction is executed, so the execution continues from the address of the subroutine that we have specified in the operand. So generally one, what is the value of this operand means? You can have some 3000, 4000 like that. So it is the place, uh, it is the value what you can place in the operand part. Okay. So it represents the procedure where it has stored, the memory location of the procedure where it has stored. So when it is executed, from that address, the control will be executing the instructions. And so coming to the call instruction here, the call instruction is classified into different types. Okay. So the call instruction we have here near call. Okay. And it is called next one for call. Okay. So the term here indicates near call, near call. That means here the operand what you are specifying in order to make the control move, it will be present in the same segment. Like how the displacement will be means the displacement value will be plus or minus 32 KB displacement only. Okay. So near call means the control will be transferring to the segment within the segment. Okay. So the displacement will be around 32 KB only. And what about this for call means for call. The control will be transferring to anywhere in the 1 MB memory. Okay, so for call means out of the segment, the control will be moving out of the segment. Out of the segment means anywhere in 1 MB memory because we know 8086 microprocessor physical memory size is 1 MB. So if it is for call, the operand, what we are specified in the program, it may be anywhere in 1 MB memory. Okay, so for call means anywhere in 1 MB. Now, so coming to here, near call, since it is within the segment, while pushing the contents onto the stack, no need to push the contents of segment address. There is no need to push the contents of CS. Only contents of IP should be pushed onto the stack. Why? Because here IP represents instruction pointer, which is used to store the offset address. But here, CS represents code segment, which is used to store the segment address. Since here the displacement is within the segment, within the segment, no need to push the contents of segment address onto the stack. Only segments of IP address will be pushed onto the stack. Now, coming to the for call. For call represents operand, what you are specifying in the instruction. It will be anywhere in 1 MB memory. So anywhere in 1 MB memory means compulsory while pushing the contents onto the stack, the contents of CS and IP should be pushed onto the stack. Why? Because segment address will be different and offset address also will be different. Okay. So here contents of IP should be pushed onto the stack. Whereas here in the for call, the contents of CS along with IP should be pushed onto the stack. Now, Again, this near call is classified as direct near call, direct near call and indirect near call. Okay. So direct near call means here the operand what we are specifying can be represented directly as a part of an instruction. But whereas here in the indirect near call, the address what we are specifying will be indicated indirectly. That means with the help of any 16-bit register except IP. Now, again, this for call is classified as direct for call and indirect for call. That means the operand will be the value of the operand what we are specifying in this case will be anywhere in 1 MB memory. So that value will be represented directly as a part of an instruction or it may be represented 
indirectly by using any 16 bit register except IP. Now, so here coming to the discussion about near call, far call, direct and indirect cases. So here if we consider near call, so this near call is a 3 byte instruction. So what is this 3 byte instruction means see here 3 bytes. Okay, so 3 byte represents, so this is 1, this is 2 and this is the third one. Okay, so this is totally 3 byte instruction. So here the first byte represents opcode, the second and third byte represents the displacement value. Second and third byte represents the displacement value. So that means whether the displacement is in the same segment the, where the control has to move. Now, so here I already told you near call means since it is present within the segment, onto the stack only the content of IP should be pushed before making the control transfer to execute a procedure. Next. So coming to the for call, for call is a 5 byte instruction, okay. So here if you see, this is the first byte, okay. So which represents the opcode value and this is second, third byte. The second and third byte represents the value of offset, that means the contents of IP and here this is the fourth and this is fifth. So this fourth and fifth byte represents the segment value. So which is used to store the segment address contents of CS onto the stack. So it is a five byte instruction. Now coming to here this call instruction. Again this call instruction has been uh, divided into near call okay and for call. Again this near call we have direct near call and indirect near call. So if it is direct near call the operand whatever we are specifying as a part of an instruction it will be represented directly. The address will be represented directly in the instruction itself where the control has to move. And the second one is indirect near call okay. So in this case the operand will be specified indirectly by using any 16-bit register except IP. And, and next one is for call. Again, this for call can be represented in the direct manner or indirect manner. So for call means the control will be transferring to the one anywhere in 1 MB memory. So if it is direct for call, the operand value will be directly represented in the instruction. If it is indirect for call, it will be represented by using a register as a part of an instruction. So here the register should be of two word memory locations. Why? Because it is two word, one word to store the offset address and another word to store the segment address. Now, so that is what about the call instruction and next instruction is RET. So RET represents written from procedure. So where if we are using call instruction in the main program compulsory in the sub program or procedure at the last instruction you have to use the instruction called RET. See here. So at each call instruction wherever if you are using call instruction in the program what happens? The contents of IP and CS will be pushed onto the stack before the control is transferring to the procedure. Or procedure we can also call as a subroutine, subprogram. Okay. So now, after pushing the contents onto the stack, the control will be moving to the subprogram and then it is going to execute that subprogram. But compulsory at the end of the subprogram, the last instruction should be RET. RET. So if that RET instruction is executed in the subprogram, the control will be again written into the main program where it has stopped by retrieving the contents of CS and IP from the stack. And it is going to execute the main program from where it has stopped and it continues the 
main programs. And here the general format of this RET instruction is RET, that is written from procedure. Now, so here in order to explain clearly about this call and return instruction, so here consider this is a main program. Okay, so this main program consists of some set of lines here. Okay, so in between when this call instruction is executed, suppose call 3000 in place of operand if you write. Okay, when this instruction is executed, it is going to execute a procedure which we have been written in the location 3000. Okay, so here this procedure also consists of some set of lines. But here at the end of this subprogram or procedure, we have to use the instruction RET. So when this written instruction is executed, again it goes to the main program. See here, when this call instruction is executed, first it starts executing the first line, second line, all the instructions sequentially. When this call instruction is executed, the control will be going to the subprogram. Before going to the subprogram, it has to store the contents onto the stack. So it is going to push the contents of IP and CS onto the stack. And then this program will be, procedure will be executed. At the end of the procedure, we have to write RET instruction. So when this RET instruction is executed, again the control will be coming to the main program by popping the contents of CS and IP from the stack and it starts executing the remaining lines of the program in the sequential order up to the end. Now, next instruction is INTN, that is interrupt type N. INT represents interrupt, N represents type number. So as we know, in the interrupt vector table of 8086, we have totally 256 interrupts available. Now, we will see how to calculate the ISR address for each interrupt. Now, so here in the interrupt structure, in the interrupt structure of 8086, the segment address will be always 0. So that is why here CS will be 000H for any interrupt. Now, so in order to calculate the offset value, we have to consider the type number into 4. So, for any interrupt, type number will be different, okay. So, based on the type number, the value will be changing, but everything should be multiplied with 4 only. Why? Because 4 bytes we require, 2 bytes to store the value of CS and 2 bytes to store the value of offset, that is IP. That is why every interrupt should be, every interrupt number, type number should be multiplied with 4 in order to get the value of offset. Now, so for example, if you consider INT 20H, okay, so this 20 represents the value of N. This is the value of N. So in the interrupt vector table, the segment address will be 000H, whereas the offset address will be type number into 4. So here the type number is 20. So here 20 into 4. So it is leading to 0080H. So the ISR address here it will be the contents of CS and IP, where CS value is here 0 and IP is 0080H. Now, so when this uh, INTN instruction is executed, okay, so we have to see that the IF flag, interrupt flag in the flag register should be set. Then only this instruction will be executed. And next interrupt is INT. INTO represents interrupt overflow. So when this instruction is executed, interrupt flow will be occurring. So before executing this instruction, we have to see that the overflow flag in the flag register format should be set. Then only this INTO instruction will be executed. Okay. So here the new contents of CS and IP are taken same as INT. Yeah. So that is why uh, what it means here how we have calculated the ISR address for INTN in the same way we have to calculate the ISR address for INTO also. So for INTN segment address for any interrupt in the interrupt vector table it will be 000H, 000H 
whereas the offset address value will be type number into 4. Okay. Here also in the same way we have to calculate the ISR address, the contents of CS and IP. So this INTO is also called type 4 interrupt. And next unconditional branch instruction is JMP instruction. So JMP represents jump. Call instruction is different and jump instruction is different. Okay. So when this instruction is executed, the processor is going to jump to the specified address, what we have indicated as a path of an instruction. Now, so here again this jump instruction, it is classified as intra-segment jump. Intra-segment. So intra-segment means within the segment. Intra-segments represent within the segment. That means uh, it consists of same segment address, but offset address will be different. Again here intra-segment jump, it is classified into short jump and long jump based on the range where the control has to move. It has been classified as short jump and long jump. And intersegment jump. So intersegment means out of the segment. Out of the segment. So the control will be moving out of the segment. Okay. Now, so it is having again for jump. So here the general format of this jump instruction is JMP operand. So here we can specify this operand directly as a part of an instruction or it can be specified indirectly by taking any 16-bit register without IP except IP register. Now, so JMP instruction, we have seen the classification now. So coming to the short jump, so the short jump is a 2 byte instruction. That means if the displacement is around plus 27 bytes to minus 128 bytes, then we can call it as a short jump. And near jump. Near jump is also a 2 byte instruction, but here the displacement, if it is within plus or minus 32 kb displacement in the same segment, then we can call it as a near jump. Next, far jump. So far jump means out of the segment. That means if the control is uh, uh, transferring to anywhere in 1 MB memory, then we can call it as a far jump. If the displacement is anywhere in 1 MB memory, it can be called as a far jump. Now, so here call, we know that is when this call instruction is executed from the main program, the control will be transferring to the sub-program, sub-program, okay. So here we have to indicate when call instruction is executed, okay. When this call instruction is executed, the control will be transferring to the predefined address what we have specified in the operand place and then it is going to execute the sub-program. After executing the written instruction, Again, the control will be moving to the main program to execute the remaining lines in the main program. But here, whereas in the jump case, if you take that it is a main program, it is a main program, okay. So, which consists of some set of lines here, okay. So, here consider this is JMP jump. 2000. So, what is this 2000 here? So, for example, consider 2090. Okay. So, 2090, consider this is the location. Okay. So, when the instructions are executed in the sequential order and when this jump instruction is executed, the control will be branching to the address what we have specified in the instruction. It means it is going to skip all these instructions which we have present before that uh, location 2090 and from here it is going to execute the remaining lines. That means the control will be moving within the program itself, no sub-program and all here in case of jump instruction. Now, next unconditional branch instruction is I 
RET. So IRET represents interrupt return. Interrupt return. So when this IRET instruction is executed, same as RET, okay, but we will consider this IRET during interrupt service routine. That means here, if, you, if we are using call operand, in place of operand, if we are giving the address of any interrupt in the interrupt vector table and the control will be going to the interrupt vector table, that specified address and it is going to do that operation. After doing that operation, again it has to come to the main program. In such cases, the control to return to the main program, we have to write the last instruction as IRET instead of RET. That means if the operand address is ISR address, it goes to the ISR. In order to return from the ISR, we have to write IRET, interrupt return. And so when IRET instruction is executed, so the value of IP, CS and all the flags will be retrieved from the stack in order to continue the execution of the main program from the remaining lines. And next unconditional branch instruction is LOOP, loop. Generally, if you are performing any operation and if, if it is required to execute the same set of lines repeatedly, okay, we have to use this instruction loop. And whatever the value you are going to move into the CX register, CX register is called a counter register. So whatever the value we are, we are moving into the counter register, those many times the loop will be repeated. But after executing the loop each time, the counter will be automatically decremented by 1. See here, whatever the value you are going into, you are going to give into the CX register, those many times the loop will be repeated. If loop repeats, the same set of instructions will be repeated number of times. But after completing each loop, the value of CX will be automatically decremented by 1. Now, coming to the next classification here, the next classification is conditional branch instructions. Okay, Conditional branch instructions means the control will be branching to the specified address only when the condition is met. That means if the flag status condition is met, then the control will be transferring to the specified address. So branches when the status of the condition code flags are met. So when these instructions are executed, that means when the conditional branch instructions are executed, they are not going to show any effect on the flags. Here only short jumps can be implemented. So what is meant by short jump? Short jump means if the displacement is very less, okay, that means if the displacement is within the same segment, then only this conditional branch instructions will be implemented. Now, coming to the conditional branch instruction, the first conditional branch instruction is JZ or JE. Okay, so both the instructions perform the same function. Okay, so what is this here? JZ represents jump if zero. Okay, so JE represents jump if equal. So JZ means jump if zero or JE represents jump if equal. So here in this case, ZF is equal to Okay, so when this zero flag is enabled, then these instructions will be executed. Okay, so both the instructions perform the same function. And next conditional branch instruction is JNE, JNZ. So JNE represents jump if not equal. JNZ means jump if not zero. Okay, so JNE represents jump if not equal jnz jump if not zero okay so it means in this case zf will be equal to zero and next one is j yes 
Okay, so JS represents jump if signed. Here, jump if signed. Okay, so when the sign flag is set, okay, when the sign flag is set, then only the jump operation will be performed to that specified address. Okay. And the next instruction is JNS. That means jump if not signed. Jump if not signed. Okay. So SF will be equal to 0. So as we know, if SF is equal to 1, what it represents? The result is a signed number, negative number. Okay. If SF is 0, it means the result is a positive. Okay. And the next conditional branch instruction. So here if you see the all the conditional branch instructions, here this is related to 0 flag. Okay. So this is related to sign flag. So all these instructions are related to flags. So when that particular flag conditions are met, then only the control will be branching to the specified address. So meeting the condition means if this based on the flags enabling and disabling, the condition will be the control will be satisfying. And next conditional branch instruction is JP. So JP represents jump if parity. Okay, because we also have parity flag in the flag register format. And here JP represents jump if parity equal. Okay, so JP represents jump if parity. Okay. And JPE represents jump if parity even. Jump if parity even. That means parity flag is equal to 1. Now, next uh, conditional branch instruction is JNP, JPO. Okay, so JNP represents jump if no parity and JPO represents jump if parity odd. So, JNP means jump if no parity and JPO represents jump if parity odd. Okay. So, here in this case, PF flag will be equal to 0. And the next one is JC, JB and JN, AE. Okay. So, JC represents jump if carry. JB represents jump if below. JNAE represents here C. JNAE represents jump if not above or equal. So these three instructions perform the same function. Okay. So JC represents jump if carry. So that means CF will be equal to 1 in this case. So whereas this uh, JB jump if below. Okay, so J N A E jump if not above or equal. Okay, so in these cases also C F will be equal to 1. So, 3 instructions performs the same operation. And next one is J N B, J A E and J N C. So, J N B represents jump if not below. Okay, J A E represents jump if above or equal. And J N C represents jump if no carry. Okay, so jump. If no carry. So that means CF will be equal to 0. And next conditional branch instruction is JO. So JO represents jump if overflow. Jump if overflow. That means here in this case OF will be equal to 1. So if you consider these cases here. This is related to parity flag and this is uh, related to carry flag. Okay. And this is related to overflow flag. So all these, if these conditions are satisfied, then the condition will be, that means the control will be branching to the predefined address or the address specified in the instruction. Next conditional branch instruction is JGE. So JGE represents jump if greater or equal and JNL represents jump if not less. Okay. So JGE represents jump if greater or equal 
or jump if not less. That means here SF is equal to 0 nor OF is equal to 0. Okay. So here the control will be branching to the specified address when sign flag is equal to 0 and also overflow flag is equal to 0. And next conditional branch instruction is JNO. That means jump if no overflow. Jump if not overflow. Okay. So that means if overflow flag is 0, then the control will be branching. And next one is JL or JL G. So JL represents jump if less than. Jump if less than. Okay. So JNG represents jump if not greater than or equal. Okay. So, in this case, SF will be 1 or OF is equal to 1. Now, so JLE, JNC. Okay. So, JLE represents jump if less than or equal and JNC represents jump if no carry. Okay. So, JLE means jump if less than or equal and JNC represents jump if no carry. So, when this JLE or JNC instruction is ZF is equal to 0 or SF or OF should be equal to 1. So, here this is related to 0 flag, sign flag and overflow flag. And next one is JBE, JNA. So, JBE represents jump if below or equal and here JNA represents jump if not above. So, here jump if below or equal. So, in this case CF will be equal to 1. And ZF also will be equal to 1. So, here JNA represents jump if not above. Okay. Now, coming to other conditional branch instruction. Next one is JNBE, JA. So, JNB represents jump if not below or equal. JA represents jump if above. So, here this uh, JNB, JA represents when CF is equal to 0 and ZF is equal to 0. So, when this condition is met, the control will be branching. Okay. So, JNB represents jump if below or equal. And another one is jump if above. And next conditional branch instruction is JNLE, JE. So, JNLE represents jump if not less than or equal. JE represents jump if equal. Okay. So, when the control will be branching in this case means when ZF is equal to 0 or SF or OF should be equal to 1. Okay. So, JNLE represents jump if not less than or equal. Okay. So, JE represents jump if equal. So, in this lecture, we have discussed about the program control transfer instructions, conditional and unconditional branch instructions. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.